Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Liam. I'm one half of DeploymentZone.tv. And, I mean, eventually, I think Games Workshop walked it here. I, I'm not sure they put it in the actual post. Because I got this today. So I'm filming this video on the 8th of February. And if you have been following the Dark Angels release, you will know this codex was available for pre-order uh, back on the something... I, I, more than a week ago, it was January still, when you were able to pre-order this, uh, the 30th I think it was, and this came out on the 6th, so I received this preview copy of the Dark Angels Codex two days after you all could buy it. Sounds terrible I know, but Games Workshop had some issues, they explained to us that they had these issues and they have finally got it to us, so a big thanks to Games Workshop and a huge shout out to the guys there that have continued to work throughout this pandemic and continue to get hobby stuff out to all of us, whether that be models, paints, books, etc. So a big thank you, Games Workshop. I have finally got it, and I did promise you that when I got my hands on this codex, I would give it a review. So um, here it is. Here's my review of the Dark Angel supplement. First and most important thing to note about the Dark Angel supplement is it is exactly that. It is a supplement. It is not a codex in itself. So previous editions of 40k, we have known the Dark Angels to have their own codexes, their own separate books that contain all the units that Dark Angels can use. That's not the case in 9th edition. For the first time in a very long time, Dark Angels is now a supplement to Codex Space Marines. So this book may seem like it's a bit thin on the ground and a bit light. It's a bit light specifically for Primaris additional rules or Space Marine additional rules. Well, that's because you get all of that stuff in the Space Marine Codex anyway. So all that stuff that's in the 9th edition Space Marine Codex, all those stratagems you have access to, transhuman, all that kind of stuff, that all exists. You can use all of that in the Dark Angels or with the Dark Angel supplement. You can also use all of the units... I think all of the units in Codex Space Marines. I don't think there's any restrictions for the Dark Angels. So you get access to everything, everything that is in that book. And historically, I think Dark Angels, Blood Angels, Space Wolves have had some units they didn't have access to, and most units they did. Well, this is different now. You get access to all of that stuff and the additional Dark Angels units. And Dark Angels are very lucky because they actually have quite a few additional units. We'll cover some of those when we go on to the data sheets. So what else does that mean for Dark Angels? Well, they clearly uh, still benefit from all the standard Space Marine rules, so they still get things like Shock Assault and Bolter Discipline. They still have Combat Doctrines for um, Devastated Doctrine, Tactical Doctrine, Assault Doctrine, etc. But they they also gain additional special rules, additional sort of universal special rules on top of those standard special rules that the Space Marines get, which includes obviously their chapter trait, which is called Grim Resolve, um, and some extra stuff. So Grim Resolve, if you're not aware, and I don't know if this is new just to the Space Marine Codex 9th edition or whether this was the old Grim Resolve rules anyway, they automatically pass combat attrition tests, so you don't have to take, if they fail a morale, they'll never lose any more than one, which is basically how it used to be in 8th edition anyway. And Grim Resolve also means that if they stand still in the preceding movement phase, and this doesn't include consolidation or piling moves, they get plus one to hit in the shooting phase. So if they stand still, they get plus one to hit. I think that's everything. I think that's all Grim Resolve covers. I'm sure the Dark Angels players will scream at me if I'm wrong, but I'm not a... See, I haven't played Dark Angels since 6th or 7th edition, maybe 7th edition, I think. I played Dark Angels last, so I'm a little bit rusty with them. Um, but that's Grim Resolve. Additionally, you have probably noticed if you've got the Space Marines Codex that certain units have got additional special rules in there. So a librarian will say that if it's in a Dark Angels detachment, it gains a Deathwing keyword. And an Outrider unit will say that if it's in a Dark Angels detachment, it gains a Ravenwing keyword. And that's important for certain special rules that exist in this book. So Ravenwing units in Death, or sorry, Dark Angels detachments gain the Jink ability, and Jink ability in the Dark Angels uh, supplement is a 5 plus invulnerable save if you've moved, and if you don't move, you lose that. And if you advance uh, your Ravenwing units, that goes to a 4 plus invulnerable save, so that's key. Deathwing units, they gain the inner, they get a Deathwing keyword, and they gain the inner, the inner circle. Inner sequel? The inner sequel. That sounds like a crazy Russian way of pronouncing it. The inner circle ability. And the inner circle ability has a a raft of things that list underneath the inner circle ability, which basically means that if you're fighting fallen or chaos, I think you can't fall out of combat. Uh, if you do want to fall out of combat, unless you're a chapter master or a vehicle, you have to roll 2d6 and be lower than their leadership to be able to fall out of combat. Mm, okay. The biggest thing for inner circle is you basically get transhuman on anything that's got inner circle. If you don't know what transhuman physiology is, it's a two command point stratagem in the Space Marine Codex, where your unit can't be un uh, can't be wounded on a roll of a wound roll of a one, two, or a three. 
Now, in a circle units, in the Deathwing, in the Dark Angels, they get that. They can't be wounded on a roll of a 1, 2, or 3, regardless of weapon abilities. So you can only ever wound them on a 4+. Plus. And I think that's one of the reasons why Dark Angels got so popular towards the end of 8th edition, because that is supremely, supremely strong. Combine that with the fact that Terminators now have three plus, sorry, four plus, uh, three wounds and four plus invulnerable saves with those shields. That's pretty tough. And I know it's not as good as the three plus invulnerables used to be, but you've got three wounds now and you can't be wounded on a one, two, or a three. That's super good. I, I really like that rule. So then it goes on to add some more caveats. Basically, if your whole army is selected from the Dark Angels or your whole detachment is selected from the Dark Angels, you gain the Sons of the Lion ability. And Sons of the Lion is an additional combat doctrine type ability that we'll cover in a minute. Then if every unit is Dark Angels and has the Ravenwing keyword in an Outrider detachment, they gain the second company special rule. And the same is said for every unit in a Vanguard detachment if they're Deathwing rather than Ravenwing, but all Dark Angels, they gain the first company universal special rule. And there's some extra abilities that they give you. So excited for this. So, so excited for this. I asked for this two weeks ago when I did my preview and it happened. So first of all, we'll go on to Sons of the Lion. Essentially, Dark Angels are really lucky. They get like three abilities essentially throughout the whole of the um of the of the tactical doctrine. So or not the tactical doctrine, but the combat doctrine. So most of the chapters that I've seen so far have an ability that's in a doctrine, a tactical doctrine ability, and it's a bolt-on to the normal tactical, doct the tactical doctrines. If you don't know Space Marines, uh, tactical devastate and assault doctrines basically mean that certain weapons, when you're in those particular doctrines, get an additional minus one to their armor penetration value. Um, you start off in Devastator, you have to move to tactical nowadays in turn two, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, early to, uh, eighth edition you could choose. Then you moved into, you could stay into a tactical doctrine in turn three, or you could move into assault and turn four you had to finally move into assault or you could again move into assault in turn three should you choose now sons of the lion is really strong because it gives you abilities in both in fact in all three doctrines so if you're in the devastated doctrine um you get three inch additional move for ravenwing units so they move even further and they're pretty fast anyway but in addition you can advance and shoot uh with uh, assault weapons without any penalty in the Devastator Doctrine. So in the first turn, your Ravenwing units can move their normal movement, move an additional three inches, advance their normal flat six for things like bikes, and then still shoot their weapons without any negative penalties to hit. Wow. So things like Ravenwing Black Knights are hammering forward at an insane pace and opening fire with rapid fire plasma talons with weapons of the Dark Age, because that's back obviously, in the first turn insane and if you put them in second company you get the second company rule which we'll talk about in just a minute which makes them insane insane like two levels of insane that's why i said it twice it's two levels obviously when you move into the tactical doctrine you get fire discipline and fire discipline we kind of covered on the preview so fire discipline essentially means that you can fight you can shoot in combat now a point to note this is only in the tactical doctrine so you get this for set turn two and maybe turn three if you stay in tactical doctrine but basically means that anything that you're in engagement range with, you can shoot at that thing that you're in engagement range with. The only difference being you count as ballistic skill 5 instead of your normal ballistic skill. But clearly, if you're in combat with it, that and it's your shooting phase, you've stood still, which means that with... Uh, rightly pointed out to me by numerous people on that last video. It means that with um, Grim Resolve, you get plus one to hit because you stood still. So your Blister Skill 5 means Blister Skill 4. That's really, really strong. I mean, think about it on things like Flamestorm Aggressors. You're auto hitting because it's a Flamer. So the Blister Skill 5 plus makes no difference to you anyway. And you can auto flame people in combat and then hit them with your Power Fists afterwards. Really love that ability. Again, you get that for one or two turns if you stay in Tactical Doctrine. And I think, if I'm honest, I think you're probably going to stay in Tactical Doctrine with Dark Angels for the first, second the third turn because of that ability and then you'll move into the assault doctrine in turn four normally unless specifically you've got a ton of deathwing units and you're facing a ton of vehicles because the additional rule that you get is implacable and implacable happens in the assault doctrine and basically deathwing infantry and deathwing dreadnought units uh, they basically or characters if they're attacking characters or vehicles is that right wait a minute okay i checked it it's not vehicles it's if you ca attack a character unit or a unit that contains any models with a wound characteristic of eight or more you can re-roll the wound roll so it is vehicles because it's a unit with a model with a wounds characteristic of eight or more. I say it is. It's not vehicles, is it? Because I, I suppose there is six wound vehicles out there, like Venoms and stuff. So anything with more than eight wounds or a character model, you can uh, you can reroll your fail to wounds. It's well, I say just say reroll wounds. So that's really strong. 
So additional speed and firing without penalty for Ravenwing, essentially, in the Devastator Doctrine, Tactical Doctrine, everything can fire even in combat, and then Assault Doctrine, your Deathwing are battering things that have got more than eight wounds or characters. Wow. So that's lots of extra rules already just for playing Dark Angels. So you'd think they'd leave it there. No, they didn't They didn't leave it there. They, they added more rules in. So we then go on to the first and second company uh, rules. So remember, if you have a Vanguard with pure Dark Angels and they all, ha they all have to have the Deathwing keyword, you gain the first company in that Vanguard. Deathwing Terminator Squads, Terminator Squads, Terminator Assault Squads and Relic Terminator Squads in this detachment gain objective secured. And if your Warlord is part of this detachment, the detachment's command benefits are plus three. So I said that I wanted them as troops or gain your command points back. They gave us both. Everything. They give everything. Second company. Second company. Uh, bike squads and Outrider squads units in this detachment gain the objective secured. And if your Warlord is part of this detachment, it's plus three command points. Primaris Outriders in an Outrider detachment, so the one with all the fasts, basically. They all get Obsec. Um, because they're Ravenwing, in terms of the Space Marine book, they all gain Jink as well, so five up and blah, so just for moving. And if you put your Warlord in there, I mean, it's got to be a Ravenwing model, but you, you get your command points back and it's free. Thank you. Thank you, Games Workshop. So you think that would be enough. You think that's enough extra rules to give you. No, no, no. No, 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 no. You can have some more rules. Have some more rules, Dark Angels players. And there's one that calls it's called Rites of Initiation. Now, we have seen in the Space Marine Codex and in some of the other books, I think Death Guard give you this with um, different, I can't remember what they call them, contagions or something. Contagion, not contagion, but is it? But it's, yeah. You can pay points for extra rules is where I'm going with it. Um, so in the Space Marine book, you can pay 40 points to make your captain a chapter master or 25 points to make your librarian a chief librarian. And they gain some additional rules for those, um, which the chapter master, if you take him as his warlord trait, you can give loads of rerolls, like reroll to hits and stuff, instead of just reroll ones and stuff like that. The librarian, he knows an additional psychic power, a standard, and you can take a relic. Or is it a relic or is it his warlord trait that gives plus one to psychic tests? So rights of initiation is points-based, so you have to pay points to give this to a specific unit. And I don't think there's a limit on how many you can give it to, as far as I can see. Um, and you, you, they gain, they become members of the Deathwing. They gain the Deathwing ability, and as we've all know, because we've just been talking about it, Deathwing units gain inner circle. So basically, transhumans. You're basically paying points to give units transhuman forever. I mean, to some extent, it doesn't count for the bottom four or five units because they're vehicles, and you can't give transhuman or you can't give inner circles. One, two, or three can't wound you doesn't count on anything unless it's infantry. But your first and second choices are a captain or a primaris lieutenant um, equipped with a storm shield. It says specifically, I don't know why it says specifically with a storm shield, but it does. Uh, and then dreadnought, land raider, repulsor, storm raven, or uh, and transports. You can pay points to make them deathwing. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you think that they then have the Deathwing keyword, they don't ruin your Vanguard attachment if you're taking Deathwing Terminators um, and Deathwing units in. And Blade Guard, by the way, are Deathwing units. So you can take Blade Guard and Blade Death Guard Terminators and you can pay some points for a couple of Dreadnoughts and a Repulsor and they all get to go in this Vanguard and they're all free and you don't, it, it doesn't break your Objective Secured rule. Your Terminators keep the Objective Secured rule because you've paid points to make them Deathwing. I think that's really, 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 really good. That's insanely good. It clearly excludes name characters. That's about it, though. Um, wow. Being a supplement, we then move on to the stratagems, and there's only two pages. And I say only two pages, but actually, the stratagems on the whole, they're not that bad. They're quite narrative. They predominantly focus around specific Deathwing or Ravenwing units. You don't get a lot that's just for sort of Dark Angels. There's a couple of standard ones where you can take an additional Relic or additional Wall or Trait. Weapons of the Dark Angels. Uh, weapons of the Dark Angels? Weapons of... That would be a better name. No, maybe not. Weapons of the Dark Age is still in there for two command points where you take Plasma Weapons and you add one to the damage characteristics, so that's good. There's a really cool stratagem called Secret Agenda for a single command point where when you're picking your secondary objectives, you can hide them from your opponent and you don't have to tell them until you first score any points for those secondary objectives. So that's really, really cool. But again, like I say, most of them are around Ravenwing. Swift Strike makes means you can you can sort of pile in or fall out of combat, kind of, if you've been fighting. Um, there's a couple of other interesting ones that are in there that we, some of which we've seen in the in the previous preview. 
Um, some of them we haven't. Deathwing Assault, for example, single command point, and if you were sat set up on the battlefield that turn, every time you shoot, um, you get plus one to hit which is quite nice. Full Throttle from Ravenwing is 12-inch move in your advance rather than normal, but you can't shoot. Again, that's quite cool. High Speed Focus. If you're shot at with a Ravenwing unit, you can spend a command point and you get a 4-plus available save instead of the 5-plus that you get as standard from Jink. So some, there's some really cool stratagems in there. Again, if you're not focusing on Ravenwing or Deathwing, you're not going to see huge amounts of benefits from these stratagems. But they're not bad. One that I do think is really strong is called Tactical Appraisal. It's a single command point. Basically, your Warlord, I believe it is, picks a unit within six inches, and they and then he picks a combat doctrine for them. So if your unit's tied up in combat, you potentially could go, we're going to put you back in Tactical Doctrine, that specific unit, if I'm within six inches of you, obviously. And then they can fight them in combat, stuff like that. That's quite cool. Um, but on the whole, like I said, nothing seems too turbo-broken for the Dark Angels in terms of stratagems. It's just all the rules that came beforehand that seems ridiculously strong. So the Dark Angel supplement gains the six Warlord traits like most supplements Stroke Codexes get. Don't forget you've still got access to the six Warlord traits that are standard in the Space Marine book. Not to mention if you have a Phobos, you can have the Vanguard ones, etc. Um, but we also gain an additional four Warlord traits in this book. Two for Ravenwing and two for Deathwing. Um, Brilliant Strategist is pretty good, which is the one that Azrael comes with as standard. And if you're a Dark Angels player, you're going to want to field Azrael. It's, he's mental, um, but Brilliant Strategist is his Warlord trait, and basically, at each time a model in that unit, so, so that's, uh, you pick a unit, sorry, within six inches in your command phase, I should have mentioned, but each time a model in that unit makes an attack, if the attack doctrine is active, it counts as Devastator, if the Devastator doctrine is active, it counts as Tactical. Um, no, sorry, if the Assault Doctrine is active, it counts as tactical. I keep forgetting which way round it goes. Um, so that's cool, not too bad. There's a couple of others that personally I don't think are that great. Stubborn Tenacity is very, very interesting. Basically, if your Warlord is slain, you can keep him on the battlefield until the start of the next turn or the end of the game, whichever one comes first. So if your opponent has the first turn, um, uh, because it's two battle rounds make a turn and he kills you in, in his battle round, you can keep your Warlord on the table for the whole battle round, and at the end of that turn and the start of the next turn, then you remove him, so, and he can act as normal. And any additional wounds allocated to him are then lost. Really interesting as a Warlord trait, that. Especially if you're really desperate, you're really clutch, and you want to keep those re-rolls to hit rolls or for wound rolls, or whatever it might be. Super interesting, not too bad. Caliber Knight Knight allows you to hit on twos if you're fighting infantry or bike units in combat, that's not too bad. Um, there's things like lightning fast reactions, where if you attack against a, a Ravenwing Warlord, it's minus one to hit. Um, a Master Maneuver, you can shoot or charge in a turn in which he fell back, which is pretty strong. Shooting and charging in a turn you fall back, especially with something like a new Primaris Chaplain on bike and stuff, that's quite a strong trait, to be honest with you. Um, Inexorable for Deathwing, which is probably their best one, I think, is reducing damage by one. We've already seen with the Death Guard in this edition how strong that is, so that's not too bad. Um, oh, all in all, pretty decent Warlord traits. No massive standouts for me. There's some interesting ones, no massive standouts. I think if I was a Dark Angels player, I'd probably be looking at Stubborn Tenacity or Brilliant Strategist as my standout too for generic Warlord traits. Otherwise, being that most characters in Dark Angels gain the Deathwing ability, Inexorable for minus one damage seems like it's, it'd be pre a pretty big deal in making your Warlord that little bit more survivable, so I quite like that. The Dark Angels obviously have their own psychic discipline, and uh, that's called the Interromancy Discipline. Again, we've we've seen two of these. We've seen Engulfing Fear and Mind Wipe before. Mind Wipe essentially turns off aura abilities, and Engulfing Fear turns off Objective Secured. So we really like those two. But there's four more Mind Worm Aversion, Righteous Repugnance, and Trephination. So Mind Worm, the unit suffers a mortal wound, and until the start of the next psychic phase, the unit is not eligible to fight until all other eligible units have fought. So basically, they fight last. So they suffer a mortal wound and fight last. Aversion is uh, you pick a unit within six inches of Psyker, and subtract one from the attack characteristics of models in that unit, so it's an enemy unit, obviously. And each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract one from the hit roll. So you, I think you pick a unit, you do, you pick a unit 24 inches away, so it's this minus one from attack roll, so that'll be shooting as well. And if they are within six inches of Psycho, there's one less attack for each model, so it starts shutting units down. Uh, Righteous Repugnance is a blessing. Uh, select a Dark Angels unit within 12 inches of Psycho until the start of your next Psychic phase, each time a model that unit makes a melee attack, you can re-roll the hit roll, and you can re-roll the wound roll. 
with your Deathwing Knights that have got Inner Circle and Maces of Redemption and Storm Shields. Ooh, disgusting. And then Trephination is a witch fire. It's basically Smite, but if you beat the leadership, it's flat three mortal wounds. A decent discipline. All the powers have uses. They're all decent. I think maybe if I was to pick a worse one, possibly a version. People might disagree. Maybe not. They're all good. It's going to be hard to pick specifically two or three psychic powers from that discipline. And then we go on to the relics. Um, they have a lot more than... Well, they don't have more relics in the Death Guard, but they do. Because they have Special Issue War Gear as well, which you can pick is dead. And Special Issue War Gear is the norm. So you get a 5-up Field Known Pain with Adamantium Mantle. You get 2-up Armor and 5 Invulnerable Save of Artificer Armor. Master crafted weapon, digital weapons, etc. Uh, and then we go into the specific editions. There's a Heavenful Blade. It's like a power sword, but it's plus two strength, AP minus four, two damage, and you gain an attack. There's an Arbiter's Gaze, which is each time the bearer makes an attack, a hit roll of two plus is always successful, including when firing Overwatch. Irrespective of any modifiers or abilities the target may have. And each time the bearer makes an attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. Now, the interesting thing for these two pieces of special issue war gear is they both have extra caveats, and so do some of the relics, actually, that say a Ravenwing Talon Master is eligible to be given this relic, even though it is a vehicle. So the Arbiter's Gaze, which allows you to fire and hit on twos, including Overwatch... You can give that to a Talon Master with its twin linked assault cannons and twin linked heavy bolters. What? Atonement is basically like a relic plasma pistol that's strength 9, AP minus 4, and 3 damage. And bolts of uh, bolts of judgment, you can upgrade a bolt weapon, and it basically gives it minus 2 uh, rend and not minus 2 rend, minus 2 AP and a damage characteristic of 3, but you can only fire it once rather than however many shots that weapon normally gets. We covered the Mace of Redemption in the preview video. It's, it's a more powerful times 2 AP minus 3 mace that does more wounds to heretics. And then there's a couple of others. Some are for Deathwing specifically, some are for Chaplains. Um, you've got Foe Smiter, which is a Storm Bolter, and there's a Ravenwing Biker one that gives you a, a better and vulnerable save. Eh. So there's some good, again, there's some good relics. There's nothing that's terrible there. There's some really interesting things you can take. Uh, it's not... I I struggle to see if any of them, or struggle to believe that any of them are that much better than some of the relics that already exist in Codex Space Marines. They're not massively game-changing. I really like Arbiter's Gaze on a Talon Master because of that ability to always hit on twos, no matter what, no matter how far you've moved, no matter what's what's um, got abilities that mean you're negative to hit. And even in Overwatch, I mean, Overwatch, having that, hitting on twos is pretty disgusting. But we like it. We like it a lot. And then we go on to the secondary objectives. And there's some really interesting secondary objectives. Purge the enemy. Your opponent selects a character. And if they don't have any characters, they select a warlord. You get six victory points for killing it with a melee attack. You get additional three victory points if you killed it with an inner circle model. So we're kind of now we're kind of now sort of playing out the hunt. And you gain an additional six victory points if the unit that killed it was a Dark Angels model that survived the whole battle. So if you add them up, 6-3-6, six, six, that's a whole of 15 victory points. So if you kill the enemy character with an inner circle model that doesn't die, you get 15 victory points. Basically is the long and short of it. Uh, no Mercy, no Respite. Two victory points each time an enemy unit is destroyed by a Ravenwing model from your army that moved 12 inches or more. As long as you're keeping your bikers moving full speed, shouldn't be a problem. And Battlefield Supremacy. If you hold an objective consecutively with the same unit that has objective secured so it has to have objective secured which obviously you've got lots that could have objective secured now with dark angels you gain victory points depending on how many turns you've held it if you've held it for two you gain two held it for three you gain three held it for four or five turns consecutively you gain five victory points and you can see that if you hold it from turn one two three four five you get the maximum 15 so good secondary objectives different to what we've seen so far i like it we then move on to the Crusade rules in the book. And the Crusade rules, I don't really read these very much, but there's a big thing about hunting the fallen and scoring points and that you must have a fallen or you need to have a fallen model then you have to ask your opponent if you can hunt the fallen. I really want to love Crusade. I really, really want to love Crusade. I, I haven't tried it yet, so it's really hard for me to comment on Crusade. So I'm just going to skip past all these pages, all these lovely pages of Crusade rules and get straight to the data sheets. And being a supplement, we have data sheets that are specific to this chapter only, and it's basically the end of the book now, with the exception of points values and stuff. So we have the normal Dark Angels characters. We have Azrael, Belial, Samael, 
None of them look too different to before. Um, Samuel and Balea are essentially chapter masters for either Ravenwing or Deathwing, and you get to pick a unit in the command phase and reroll all hits. Otherwise, it's just reroll ones. And they get some other little benefits. They get some fancy swords each, and uh, and Samuel's is times two if he charges and stuff, and he's a jet bike and etc. I noticed with his plasma cannon, it's master crafted plasma cannon, D3 shots now, doesn't get help. There's no ones cause mortal wounds to himself or kill himself. Azrael's got a master crafted plasma gun that doesn't get us hot, that doesn't hurt himself, can't kill himself. I like that they're taking that away from specialist characters or named characters that we've had for Aeons and Aeons. I really, I really do appreciate that. Azrael is dirt good. He gains plus two command points. Uh, he has a chapter master ability, so you can pick a unit in a command phase. He's got his normal rights of battle ability. The Lion Helm means that any unit within six inches gets a four plus invulnerable save. He has an Iron Halo himself, and he can also try and deny the Witch every now and again, or once per battle he can try and deny the Witch. And it's 170 points for that. And he's got Inner Circle, so he'll have um, the... Uh, <laughs> well, he's got Inner Circle, so he's basically got Transhuman Physiology, physiology which is stupidly strong. Really, really good. Azrael is a really good character for 170 points. I'd argue that to some extent in a Dark Angel's army, he's borderline and auto-include for that with the abilities he gives you and the survivability he offers to units nearby with, uh, with chucking out that 4-plus invulnerable save. Um, we've got Chief Liberian Ezekiel and Asmodai, or Asmodai. I got told off for calling it Asmodai by a guy called John who just loves to watch my videos and criticise, and now he's seen this particular part of this video. You'll probably be on the phone. So Asmodai and Ezekiel. Ezekiel is basically like a Chief Librarian, but also gives plus one attack to everything within six inches. So like a Blade Guide Ancient does, he does that as well, which is quite nice, but that's to everything within six inches. Asmodai... Um, is an interrogator chaplain with, I think he can take an extra litany essentially, but he's again not much changed in their rules. Uh, and then we go on to things like the Talon Masters. We've got the Ravenwing Talon Master who has a twin assault cannon, a twin heavy bolter, so buckets and buckets of shots. Remember now that heavy bolters are damaged too, um, and he gets he allows you to reroll ones to wound because he's basically a lieutenant in a land speeder and he's got his power sword, and any power sword relic you can now give him. Because why wouldn't you want to give a land speeder a power sword, which is amazing? Um, yeah, really good unit. Like it a lot. Um, a lot of time for the Talon Master. I think he, you'll see him a lot as well in Dark Angels units. Um, pretty powerful. You've got Lazarus, who I always thought was a lieutenant, but looks like he's sort of captain ability. And then you've got Deathwing Strike Master, which is essentially a Deathwing lieutenant now. I don't know if they existed before. Tell me in the comments below, did Deathwing Strike Masters exist in 8th edition? Because I think this is the first time I've seen one, but they exist now. And then we go on to the standard Deathwing Knights, Deathwing Terminators, Deathwing Command Squad, Ravenwing Apothecary, Ravenwing Champion, Ravenwing Ancient. There's nothing new here. Apothecaries get people up. Champions can heroically intervene. Ancients have banners that allow you to shoot when you die. I'm not going to bore you with details. It's pretty standard stuff. Obviously, the Ravenwing Black Knights are up to three wounds. That's pretty strong. They've got the Plasma Talons and Weapons of the Dark Age still exists. They also have Jink, and they're super lucky. They have Inner Circle as well. But, I mean, they're not infantry. So, as far as I'm aware, they uh, they don't get transhuman, thankfully, because that would be stupid. Because um, if they were infantry, they'd get transhuman. Feels like, I say they get trans They don't get transhuman. They get that additional part of the inner circle ability that says it only applies to infantry and they can't be wounded on one, twos, and threes. So we've still got the Dark Shroud, which is minus one to hit. Still really strong. Got the Land Speed of Vengeance, which can still do mortal wounds to itself. It's a heavy 2d3 of standard strength, eight, AP minus three, two damage blast. I like it. But it is still heavy. Uh, does it count as a vehicle? It counts as a vehicle. So now it can fire, move and fire without penalty. Which is one of the things that made it terrible in 8th edition. Now it's much, much better. The Dark Talon still causes tons of mortal wounds. It's Rift Cannon. is heavy D3 shots. Strength 12. Each time an attack made with this weapon successfully wounds. Do not make a saving throw. The target suffers 3 mortal wounds. So potential for nine mortal wounds there from the Rift Cannon, and being that it's a heavy D3 blast, if you're shooting a unit with ten or more mod or more than ten models, you get flat three shots, hitting on threes, and if you wound, strength twelve. Remember, if you wound, three mortal wounds. Insane, absolutely insane. It also has a stasis bomb, which does more mortal wounds, and then whatever gets caught in stasis can't fall back. The Nephilim Jet Fighter. Again, it's a vehicle now, so it doesn't suffer the penalty for moving and firing, and it also gets plus one to hit against aircraft, so that's actually quite a decent anti-aircraft unit now with its twin last cannon and its missiles. I quite like that. And the missiles, if you target an aircraft with your missiles, it's flat four damage, 
Strength 7, AP minus 3, flat 4 damage. That's really good. And no longer one use only. I don't know if they were one use only before. And then it's on to points, values, and attachment abilities or weapon abilities that are sort of summarized as a code as a, as supplements and codexes do now. It's a supplement that's that's really strong and gives you tons of extra abilities and rules. I think you're gonna see loads of Dark Angels players. Honestly. I, I the Blood Angel supplement was really good, and I felt like the Space Wolf supplement was a little bit lackluster. Um, I think that if you were to hold the Space Marines supplements that existed so far, Blood Angels and Space Wolves, there was a clear winner, and it was Blood Angels quite easily. This is a new contender and a new challenger. Now, I've been asked, and I think I spoke about this on the last video, whether Codex Creep was real. I don't know. It's really strong. There's loads of cool extra rules. I don't know whether I would call this necessarily Codex Creep. Lots of people claiming that it is. Lots of people claiming that this is Codex Creep and things are getting stronger and stronger. I'm not so sure. I don't know if I would honestly say that these are a lot more powerful than Death Guard, for example. I don't even know if I'd call them more powerful. I'd be interested to see how they play off against each other. They're good. They're really, really good. And there's tons of extra rules um, that allow you to field your Deathwing and your Ravenwing narratively. But you've got to remember that there are things that exist within 40k and 9th edition that's going to cause you some problems. Now, if you want to run pure Ravenwing um, and a single Outriders attachment, that's a point, actually. I've got to check something a minute. So I checked. Ravenwing Black Knights are elite choices, which is really interesting. So if you want to take an Outrider attachment for Ravenwing, you need bike squads and Outrider squads. And if you then take Black Knights, you only have two elite slots in an Outrider attachment. So if you want more than two squads of Black Knights or additional elites on top of that, you're going to have to start expanding into bigger uh, detachments or more detachments and then start spending command points to do that. Same can be said for Deathwing. You can get three elite choices in there. We can get more than three elite choices, obviously, in there. But you need three elite choices. You're restricted to two heavies and two fast attack. So although they have these extra abilities that mean that Vanguard and Outrider attachments now gain things like Objective Secured, it's still restrictive. You may still need a battalion or a patrol or something extra to bolt onto the side of it. And let's be fair, bolting a patrol on isn't a massive issue. It costs you two command points, which in the old money, if you had a patrol and an and a outrider because your warlord would be in the patrol detachment to refund the two, you'd cost you three. A little bit better value, I suppose. Add in Azrael, you get your two back. Not too bad. Perhaps still get 12 command points. There's ways around it is what I'm saying. Uh, but I don't think it's as insanely powerful as maybe people are making out. Um, shooting in combat, super strong. Only happens in the tactical doctrine. That's one or two rounds. And if you've invested heavily in Deathwing units, there's a strong possibility you might want to move into assault so you can make use of that whacking high uh, wound targets with your melee weapons ability that they have. I really like it. I think that what's nice about this codex is there isn't a definite obvious you want to be running Deathwing detachments or Ravenwing detachments or Greenwing detachments. There's no definite relic to take. There's no definite warlord trait. There's no definite psychic power. To me, that's a sign of a really good supplement because there's lots of variety to choose from and I think people can go different directions with that same supplement and that's what I like about it you won't necessarily see the same thing over and over again additionally like I said it's a bolt onto the space marine codex you've still got all that standard space marine stuff as well there's loads of options for dark angels dark angels players I think to the start of 8th edition specifically probably felt a little bit unloved and like their faction wasn't doing so well and I can understand why it definitely wasn't sort of narratively how a Dark Angels army would want to work. I said it before, John Stewart used to run Visicast. I loved his Ravenwing army, played it tons in 7th. 8th edition came, killed it for him because he couldn't run it like he wanted to run it. Now he can. Now he can run it the way he wanted to run it in ninth, in 7th edition, kind of. And he gets objective secured bikes and outriders. He doesn't get obsec um, black knights, but... He gets his command points back if he runs an Outriders attachment. Loads of benefits there. Real big fan of this book. I think it's super powerful. I think you're going to see it quite a lot. Um, and if you're a competitive player, yeah, I think you're still going to see it quite a lot. And I would argue that maybe it's on par, if not a bit better than the Blood Angel supplement. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that goes yet. I'm not sure how that fits. But I just think because they get so many extra rules in all of the different tactical doctrines or the um, combat doctrines. I just think it feels that little bit stronger as a well-rounded piece, as a well-rounded supplement. And there you have it. That's my review of supplement Dark Angels, um, finally, after you all could buy it and read it anyway. So don't listen to me. You could have just read it instead of listening to me waffle on. Um, but like I said, a massive thank you to Games Workshop for finally getting it out to me. Um, and it did come with their apologies. They're accepted. Your apologies are accepted. We'll take them. We'll take them on board. Just don't, please don't let it happen again. It was painful waiting that long. 
people bought it from a shop and got it before I was able to even review it, which I, I shouldn't be ungrateful. Um, so if you enjoyed this uh, video, then please think about subscribing to the channel. There's plenty of these now coming up. We're doing this every single Tuesday, 5.30 every Tuesday. Promised you, still happening. Uh, if you want to support the channel further, you can head on over to www.deploymentzone.tv and subscribe there. We've just put out a massive and major announcement on deploymentzone.tv, which we're super excited about and really keen to share with people. And I'll be sharing it on YouTube soon, just to tease you, but I haven't shared it tonight because it's probably too soon, maybe. But there's a big announcement on the website, so if you can't wait, you can sub to DZ TV and go check out what that big announcement is. Additionally, there's a link directly below, and I will link the Dark Angels supplement and the Dark Angels page on Element Games. And if you head on over to Element Games, using that link, it's an affiliate link. They know you came from us, and me and Winters get a little kickback for every purchase make on Element Games. Thank you so much. I found out recently there's a league, there's like an affiliate league, and you can be placed, I say recently, I found out a little while ago, that there's an affiliate league, and we I like being first in things, and we're not first currently, so buy more Warhammer. Lockdown, what have you got? What else have you got to do, apart from build and paint Warhammer? Buy more Warhammer. Uh, additionally, if you go onto the Element Games website and search Deployment Zone, we're now starting to put Deployment Zone merchandise in the Element Games web store, and you can go and find DZTV dice in there, they're back in stock, and they're in the web store. Uh, finally, there's a discount code below for 20% off all beard care products with a company called The Beard Struggle. Super good guys over there. I know the guy who owns the company. Um, so big thumbs up to The Beard Struggle for giving me a 20% discount to hand out to all you wonderful people. Um, and that's about that. Perfect. I guess I've got to wait three or four weeks for the Dark Elder Codex now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Oh!